This short movie is to show you the very basics of AutoCAD's 3D modeling capabilities. Now I'm keeping the grid on here so that you, when, I, when we do go into 3D you'll be able to see uh, which way things are facing. Uh, generally when you, when you start AutoCAD you're in what's called a, the drafting and annotation workspace. So you have all the things you would need generally for 2D work. Now, if you're going to be doing 3D work you should change workspace. It make, brings up a few commands that are going to be more relevant. So you can use this cog icon down here to change workspace. Also, you can use the workspace command. Okay, it's dropping off the edge of the screen here, but I'm going to change the 3D modeling. Okay, it's just off or out of view. Okay, you'll see the different different commands along the top here, and we've got some <clears throat> different panels showing already. Uh, don't need to change layer or anything here. But we're just going to draw a basic rectangle and then play around with it using the different methods that you can use for, for modeling. So I'll use the uh, the rectangle command, so that's REC, and return. Pick a start point anywhere. And then in relation to that, let's make the rectangle uh, 6 meters high. So you do at 6, sorry, 6 meters long. So at 6,000, 4,000. So it'll go 6,000 6, to one side, 4,000 up. Press return. Okay, and if we zoom extents now, so double click your middle mouse button and can zoom out. Okay, so we're still in, in 2D world at the moment. When you're in the 3D workspace, you'll see that this item appears here. And this is called your navigation bar. <coughs> Excuse the cough. Um, from this, I don't use many of the tools here, basically using just the orbit command. And this allows you to flip the, the screen into an, an axonometric stroke isometric type view. So if you click on the icon, and then you get this kind of proton looking uh, cursor. If you click and hold the left mouse button, you can twist the view over to see the shape in three dimensions. Okay, so we're able to see the three axes now instead of just the two. So Y, X, and Z coming vertically out of the off the ground. Okay, press Escape or right click and exit to get out of the uh, 3D orbit. And we'll basically just turn this into a a 3D shape using the change command. So this is the very most basic 3D stuff you can do in AutoCAD. So the change command shortens to CH and return. I'll pull the panel onto the screen so you can see what happens. Okay, I'll just float it there and I'll just zoom out a wee bit here so you can see the shape change when I actually modify it. Okay, nothing's selected so none of this is, is active at the moment. So if you just click on your rectangle and this is the setting to change. So if we change the thickness to say 3000, what it'll do is it'll, and it will make the edges go vertical. It will change them into a surface. Okay. If you click once in the in the viewport, then press escape a couple of times, you get control back. Okay, I'll just tuck this tuck this in a second so we can see what's going on. <coughs> Excuse me. Now at the moment we're in what's called 2D wireframe, so everything's see-through. Uh, you can change that. If you click on it, you could go to shaded or shaded with edges. That's quite a useful one because it, it allows you to uh, see the, the, the top edges as well. It gives things a bit more definition. Okay, let's have a wee think about that. And if I try the orbit command again, you'll see that it's given the sides some thickness. It's extruded them in a way, but it's not given it a lid. So this is pretty restrictive, generally. Um, it's a property of the of the line. It's not, you know, a true kind of 3D type of shape. So what we're going to do is escape that. Uh, just draw a line alongside that, and I'm just going to draw a circle as well. So C return and a circle. Now because this is a, this this thickness here is a property, I can apply it to other objects. So if you use the MA command, short for Match Properties, pick your source object, and then you can assign that to the other shapes. Very easy. Now as you can see why it's quite tempting to use because it's extremely easy to to change that. So creating a you know a, a general kind of room layout from a plan is very very quick using this method. Press Escape to stop that. 
Uh, let's just have a look at the, the kind of editability here. Okay, what I'll do is I'll just click on the line and then take a grip and you'll see that I can I can reposition it just as I would be able to do with a line. Now this object's a line, but this one's a polyline. Okay. Now look what I can do with the with the line. I can take that grip, but I can actually lift it off the ground. Okay, so that's going from a low point to a high point. Let's spin round, or I'll press escape, then spin round, and you can see what's happening. I've lifted it up. Looks a bit like a kind of a staircase kind of going down there. Okay. Put that back down. No problem. Now if I try to do that same thing with the with the rectangle, you'll find it says, oh, oh, hold on. Kind of nearly wants to do it, but then kind of fails. It won't let me take it up to this corner. It'll let me reposition it in plan, but it won't let me lift it off the ground. Okay, so they're all still the same height. Now that's because it's a polyline, and there's there's one restriction on polylines that they won't change the z coordinate. Um, so whichever z coordinate they start at, they stay at, which is extremely handy though for setting out things in space. So let's undo that. Now because this is a line, it still behaves like a line. So if I use the break command, br, I can put a break in that. I can lengthen it. Anything that you can do to a line, you can do to this. So you could rotate it. Whatever you need to do. Okay. Now they don't have to stay that height. They don't all have to be the same height. You can change any of these to be different heights. So if I click on that one, I could maybe make that 2000. Click on this circle, make that 1000. Okay, so it's it's cheap and cheerful, but it does have its limitations. Okay, let's close that and we'll undo until we get back to the simple rectangle. So U and I'm just going to undo quite a few steps there. Just want to get back to my simple rectangle on the ground. Nearly there now. There we go. Okay, that was method one, which is using just changing thickness of objects and stacking and what have you. The second method is uh, a bit more slick, and this is called 3D facing. And uh, you're basically starting with we start with a wire frame, so we've got something to trace, and then we add surfaces to the frame. So we've not got much of a frame here at the moment. We've just got the outline of the shape. So I'm going to put ortho on here, so I can copy vertically. And so I'll use the copy command, so cp return, pick the shape, and return. Base point can be anywhere you want. Keep away from the object, makes it easier. Set your direction, and the key to this is keeping your eye on the little grey panel next to your cursor. Can you see it says plus z, in a direction plus z. Move it to the side, it's saying it's going at 90 degrees move it this way saying it's going in direction zero okay so you carefully check what's happening with the cursor and you'll get things moving in the right direction so let's go up 3000 so you set the direction and then just type in the figure you want so 3000 return press return again to stop the command okay so I've got two rectangles in space and if I would if I thought I hadn't moved those correctly I could check by using the identity command. So identify. So ID return. Pick a point on your wireframe. And it's giving me my X, Y, and Z coordinates. Now if I identify the point directly above, I should get the same X and Y, but the Z should be 3000. So let's try that. So ID. Check this point instead. And there we have it. The X and the Y are the same, but the Z has changed by 3000. So if things were looking wrong, you just undo and do it right the second time around. Okay, so that's a, a very simple wireframe there. Okay, now we can add some surfaces to that. So we use the 3D face command, which shortens to 3F. 
And I'm just going to check my old snaps because I think I've got a few too many on here. Let's go to the settings and I'm just going to kill a few of these off. Endpoint and midpoint probably do me. Okay, the, the fewer the fewer the better when you're working in 3D. Okay, 3D face commands ready to ready to use, and this can this can create four-sided 3D faces or three-sided. Now the four-sided are, are available purely for uh, productivity, so you can do things a bit quicker. So let's go for four-sided first because they're easier to create actually. And you you pick four times. You don't come back to the place you start. So one, two three, four, and return to finish the command. Okay, still looks wireframe here because we're in the 2D wireframe view. If you change to your shaded with edges, you'll see we've got a surface now. Okay, let's keep it shaded and put two more surfaces on here. Let's put, a, let's put the side that's nearest to us. So 3D face, so it's 3F return, and then one, two, three, four, and return. And you may have noticed that I drew those anti-clockwise. It's just a habit, um, but it does have its logic in the way surfaces face. If they are drawn anti-clockwise, then the normal of that surface should be facing you. If I drew it clockwise, in 3D terms, that would be facing into that box. Okay, we'll do a third one. Let's put a lid on the box. So one, two, three, for a return. Let's have a look at that. We'll go inside, we can see that we've just added those three faces. All right, let's analyze this uh, and see what can, if it, how, how it can be edited. Let's take, let's use the stretch command instead for this. So with S return, with the stretch command you try to grab corners. So using the crossing window, small green window, you select the vertexes that you want to change. Press return. Base point can be anywhere. Set your direction and you'll see that it's dragging and reforming the shape much more freer. Now there's a line still here and that's actually the, the rectangle. That's the wireframe of the rectangle. Okay, because it's a polyline, it wouldn't stretch upwards. I can pull this shape again. And I've got a lot more freedom now. So use it. if I change back to 2D wireframe, I'd be able to influence this corner. So stretch again, so S, return, grab the corner, return, set a base point. You can do this, you know, by dimension, you, exact dimensions you want to change it by, or just roughly by eye, if you wanted just to play around with the shape. Okay. Notice this has changed, but only in 2D. It's still flat. It hasn't changed in height. That's the polyline. So let's shade that. And we've got quite a bizarre looking shape. Pretty funky, but very free and easy to, to create. Okay, let's drop back till we have the, the wireframe only. So I'm undo again. So U and return. Keep pressing return until you just got your, your wireframe. And that's it back. Okay, what we'll do now is try and draw a pyramid. And so firstly, I'm going to add another line across the top rectangle. So just corner to corner across the top rectangle. Okay, let's tilt it over with that. And what we'll do is first put the, the triangular size of the pyramid. So it will be a rectangular based pyramid. So this commands 3F again, so 3F return. And I'm going to go from endpoint to endpoint to midpoint and then return three times. First return says you don't want a fourth point. Second return cancels the command. Third return brings back the command. And then you can add another 3D face. So I'll pick one, two, three, return, return, return. Okay, let's see that. Oh, I'll press escape just there so I can just check the shading. Ah, okay, so the line we do, did across there was really just to find the apex of the pyramid. So let's spin it around and put the next two faces on while it's still shaded. Working when it's shaded isn't 
really advisable because sometimes the maths gets a wee bit screwed up. So 3F return. Pick 1, 2, 3. Return, return, return. 1, 2, 3. Return, return. Let's turn it over so we can put a base on it because it's hollow at the moment, like a hopper. And then we'll do a four sided one on the base. So 3F return. 1, 2, 3, 4. Return to finish. Okay, now what I'm going to do is show you one of the, the, the benefits or traits or, or advantages of using polylines. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll set up a, a stretch, we'll, we'll reduce the height of the pyramid by two sevenths, which is a horrible number to deal with. So first off we'll draw a line up from base wireframe to the top wireframe. So that's our kind of height guide. I'm going to put on PD mode and return and I'll set that to 66. So when I use the divide command I should be able to see the points that it puts on that line. So div return pick the line and I want seven divisions there. It doesn't break the line up it just marks where the seven divisions would be. Okay let's go back to 2D wireframe so you can see what happens. Okay what we'll do is we'll draw a polyline from this position which is five sevenths across to the middle of this line or to the apex as it is in the moment and just see what happens to the polyline it won't drop its height so pl return i'm going to start at the node so you type in nod return i'll start at this node and go to this midpoint and you see the way it's forcing it's forcing the the o snap down to the same level as the node press return Okay. Conversely, if I drew a normal line, it would let me draw from there to the apex. So that would be no use. It's not helping me set that shape out. This one did. The polyline has done the job. It's from there down to there, it's a drop of two sevenths of the overall height. So if I use the stretch command now, so S return, grab everything with a crossing window and return and go from apex to end point and that's it done. Let's check that. Let's have a look at this out of 3D. Let's go back to the plan view. So if you type plan and return twice, it's still exactly in the middle. We haven't veered off to the top or left or anything. Everything's still accurate. <coughs> Okay, now th we'll finish that one just there and we'll start another section with a new set of commands.